context in public management, the missing link, and there is also a question mark in bracket, brackets. So uh, there is both a how contextual, understanding better uh, contextual inferences may help bettering, may help the progress and improvement of our knowledge in public management and public policy, and they will argue also more broadly for the social sciences, but also can knowledge about con context and contextual inferences help this progress. So we need to question why we are bringing context into the picture, and then we need to learn how understanding context better may help us bettering our understanding of public policy, public management, public administration, public governance, hugely important and significant topics. Let me start with an example. Very simply, managing a school in England is not the same as managing a school in Italy. Let's pick but one aspect of this. In England, the recruitment of teachers in the school is managed by the head teacher, headmaster, within, of course, the regulatory frame. In Italy, it works very different, differently. Recruitment of teachers occurs via national public competitions held once every, well, a number of years, whose outcome is a national ranking entitling teachers, not the head teachers, to choose what school to work for. So the head teacher in Italy can only say, welcome to the teachers who have chosen to go to that school. And there is no possibility of managing personnel in this way. This is but one example. Uh, let me immediately state there is no ranking implicit here. Both school systems function well, or some may see some flaws and say acceptably well, but they are both, both are very good or good or acceptably good school systems. But they work in very, but they are, perform very differently in very different respects. The point is that the two school systems operate in a totally different context. The solutions that work well in one country may not work at all in the other one, and vice versa. Context matters. It is for the purpose of advancing research in this area that a major endeavor was made to gather over 30 scholars to debate this quite unusual topic, the context in public management and public policy, and to better our understanding of it. Uh, this seminar was organized at the Public Governance Institute in uh, Leuven, Belgium, and was led by Professor Gerd Buchert, a dear colleague, and on occasion of the retirement of Professor Christopher Pollitt. The outcome, well, actually, also the process was very interesting, a very nice two-day gathering with very good colleagues, very good friends, accompanied by some abundant French wine. But also the outcome is, is important, especially for the purposes of today's lecture. And this has been a book on an unusual yet, as I tried to explain, or at least to make the argument for crucial topic. Context in public policy and management, understanding this missing link. I will now provide actually some interpretations of mine and present of some of the findings that came out of this joint uh, research work. Uh, and then later on, I will try to show some ways in which I tried uh, to make my contribution to what I consider to be a crucial uh, issue, topic, and theme in our field and beyond and beyond. First, some defining points. The root word for context is the Latin word contextere, to weave together. This means that context denotes at the same time two things, the context and the object that is put in context. If I may say like that, the contexting and the contexted, although we have to be careful, these two words actually don't exist in the English dictionary, but I think they play well to give the sense. We have this dynamic, we want to understand the context, and we want to, understand, to better understand that the object that we are studying, the public policy, the public management practice, the public service that is not performing adequately well, and we want to know why. So context evokes a tissue. It entails that any institution, public institution, or public policy, or public management practice, that is the object put in context, is woven into other institutions that form a seamless tissue. But if context concerns weaving together, then a first question arises. Can we transfer between contexts? That is, can institutions, policies, practices be transferred elsewhere or are they unique 
to the context into which they generated and into which they are currently woven. This argument has recently been made uh, in a very original uh, piece by Professor <clears throat> Fabio Rugge, who is currently serving as the rector or vice chancellor of the University of Pavia in Italy, an eighth century old university, who is, happens also to be a historian of public administration. Actually, that's his main, his main uh, role, but we you know, uh, put him on loan for six years to serve as vice chancellor. And he, uh, in one of the last pieces actually he could work at before, before taking office, he actually made this argument, not that he believes this, but that there is a way of conceiving of context as a barrier. This is called the intransigent context. The idea that context, that each political system may be so unique, made of cohesive, consistent, homogeneous elements within it, as not to allow for any exogenous pattern or institution modeled in a foreign context to ever intrude. It's that our institutions are the only ones in the world, which in a sense, of course, is true. But the question is, can we learn from institutions in another context and transfer it to improve? If so, we need to adapt them, of course. And the question then becomes how to adapt them. Actually, the question, of course, at, at, at the root of all is that uh, uh, if we don't challenge the uniqueness argument, definitely we say, well, we cannot learn anything from institutions in other contexts. Our argument here is that, yes, we can. We can. The question is, uh, what theories enable us uh, to understand the contextual inferences so that we may transfer from one uh, context to another one. So we need to theorize context. And there are many attempts to do, to do that uh, along different lines. For example, our colleague from uh, University of Oxford, Professor Christopher Hood, has worked on cultural theory to try to understand and make sense of context. Other colleagues, uh, like Professors Bevier and Rhodes, have worked on context as history. They use uh, actually a philosophy, historicism, applied to the social sciences and in particular to public institutions to make sense of context through a, a radical historicist perspective. Still other uh, scholars think of context as a set of interconnected institutions and work with new institutional theory for making sense and understanding contextual inferences like Professor Guy Peters from the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, these are uh, important theories and yet leave, in a sense, unresolved uh, some key underlying issues or questions. So we need to question context. And the first question we put is, what does context do? Actually, there are different perspectives, but at least we can identify two perspectives for making sense of context. One is the metaphor of the backdrop. So we see social agents, that is individuals, that is persons like us, uh, acting in different contexts. And we see this context as a little bit the backdrop in, uh, in uh, using the theater, theater metaphor. Obviously, the same action takes a completely different meaning if it is set against the backdrop of a 17th century royal court or contemporary London. So the idea is that we are like actors, social actors, playing, doing uh, our social activities against a certain backdrop. And yet there is another uh, way of conceiving of context as animating. Actually, we cannot make socially meaningful decisions in uh, a setting which is a contextualized, in which there is no context. So context is enabling. Decisions that we do, that we make, are always, to use that word which doesn't exist in, in English, contexted, put in context. Context as animating. And it's very uh, nice for me to point out that this is a contribution that stems from an emeritus Open University professor, Professor John Clark from uh, the Social Science. Another key question, what or who makes the context? Here again, we can see two contending perspectives. One can say context is a given, is the product of history. It simply happens to be there. Or can take a more dynamic uh, uh, vision of context as constituted and reconstituted, as does another colleague here at the Open University, Professor Janet Human, emeritus or emerita, I should say, in Latin, uh, Open University professor. Uh, also, 
this is possibly a little bit more uh, immediate and intuitive to, to grasp, but it's very important. Context may also depend on scale. If you are the health minister, the minister for health, or as we say here in the UK, the secretary uh, for health, uh, uh, in a sense, the health policy is not part of the context, it's what you do. But if you are a manager in a hospital, the health policy is part of your context. So it also depends, if you like, on the standpoint or viewpoint, and in a sense it depends also, or may vary, does vary actually, with scale. This for delving into the uh, nature of context, trying to make sense, uh, make sense of it and questioning what we are talking about. We can also say, and so how can we analyze uh, contextual influences? So, okay, that's the nature, that's challenging to try to understand in depth what we're talking about. But how do we study contextual influences? I will first take the difficult road, and then I will shift to a much easier road. So don't get um, challenged or a little bit scared by the next slide, but I think we need to mention a couple of theoretical questions to then try to find more solutions and not only, ans not, not only questions uh, in search of an answer. But first, some key uh, crucial questions. Uh, first, in the social sciences in general, like in the natural sciences, uh, like uh, in the humanities, we are all searching for the causes of things. What is the cause of a certain effect? More often, we tend to use or to search for one individual cause, which may, may be necessary or sufficient. Uh, maybe, and this is deterministic causation, or perhaps we, we look for um, kind of probability of something to happen when something else happens. This is probabilistic causation. This is really the terminology we use in the social sciences uh, to try to make sense of, of uh, an effect and to explain it. But if we bring a context into the analysis, we cannot content ourselves with just one cause, or two or three, very limited. We need to resort to a configuration or constellation of causes that together determine that certain outcome because they operate under a certain context. And there is a strand in the social sciences studying configuration of causes, called with this little bit of a challenging term, multiple conjunctural causation. Probably this is the kind or the type of uh, analytical apparatus we need to employ to better understand causation, what is the cause of a certain effect when we are taking the broader context into the picture. Other approaches try to go the other way around. Uh, they even start from saying, if we look at context, we have an infinite number of explanations. That's too much, that's too many. And so we need to narrow down to simplify the problem. So the, working the other way around, how to disentangle the most proximate influencing factors from the broader configuration of factors, which still are important. They enable or inhibit certain causes of a set of courses of action. It's a research uh, stream which colleagues like uh, Tom Christensen, Per Legrid, or uh, Johan Ferley and myself are trying to pursue others in, in certain works. Some are employing or resor resorting to theories we are a little bit less accustomed uh, to in the social sciences, like complexity theory, and see how this may help us navigate uh, the understanding of the causes of things uh, when we are taking uh, context into account, like colleague Professor Tony Boverde from the University of Birmingham. So these are the kind of big challenges. And yet if we just delve into these big challenges, we will never come out with, with the kind of more applicable solutions to really making sense of context for solving, for addressing extant uh, problems that we have in public policy and public management. As Christopher Pollitt argues, these are fantastic ingredients, but we are still left without the final recipe to prepare the marvelous dish that will satiate our hunger for understanding how contextual influences operate. Yes, I'm aware, mentioning hunger just before dinner is very challenging, I know, but it is really where we are. Good all these analytical apparatuses, but we want also to kind of tackle this problem and, and bring solutions to that. So one way forward, which I suggest in this, in this lecture, is 
to kind of consider um, the analysis, the understanding of context as made up of multiple levels, of course, systematically interacting with each other, but also to some extent analytically distinguishable, like levels of context. And we can, of course, uh, distinguish between the macro level, context as, for example, culture, or even civilization. So we have the context of the Confucian uh, public administration uh, in China and a number of other countries, which is different from the context of Western public administration. That's a really macro level. Then we can also have uh, a meso, perhaps more accessible, level of uh, uh, context as a political administrative system of a country or a cluster of countries, uh, uh, the specific culture of governance, the policy styles, uh, the professional epistemic cultures, a, a more a kind of a meso level of analysis, or we can focus more the micro level, the context of a specific policy sector or indeed even the individual organization. Actually, what I tried to do over my professional life, at the beginning more intuitively, in the hindsight, thanks also to the opportunity of this lecture to reflect upon my own intellectual trajectory in a little bit of a more uh, self-conscious and systematic way, is to tackle the issue of context at different levels, one at a time. Uh, now we'll follow uh, for, for kind of autobiographical reasons, uh, all in all, this is an inaugural lecture, more my con the chronological order of these uh, um, publications rather than uh, the order from ma macro to micro, vice versa. And actually, I started at the meso level and I tried to complement the research work made by uh, colleagues like Christopher Pollitt and Gerd Buchert to understand how the political administrative system of a country may affect the reform of public management of public administration in that country. Some countries were uh, heavily studied, like the United Kingdom, for example, but others less so. So I tried to tackle uh, and try to understand the public management reforms in those contexts at the meso level. Later on, I turned to the micro level, contextual influences in the forming of the strategy of uh, organizations for public services. And more recently, you know, the more you get uh, um, a, a little bit uh, older, the more you try to be ambitious. And so I try to address the macro level of the European public administration as the conceptual and factual context of public administration in Europe, or even more ambitiously, of the West. But let's start from the meso level. So trying to understand context as uh, uh, the political administrative system which, of course, has an influence on uh, the dynamics of the reform of the public sector in a certain country, for example. And in this uh, book and many other related work, a number of other related works, I try to do this uh, for countries in the so-called Napoleonic or French model of public sector, uh, French model of the state. Actually, this book is, is about an important, yet relatively understudied part of Europe. Uh, not so much, of course, France. Uh, the French public sector has very often been included in comparative studies, but less so the public sector of Italy and especially Greece, Portugal, and Spain. There are very practical reasons why this occurred. Uh, one is that, uh, as we know, there were dictatorships in Greece, and uh, Portugal, and Spain uh, till uh, the mid of the 1970s. And as we know, uh, dictatorships uh, and any coercive regime is not a good friend to free, independent research and the study. And so they are relatively late comers to our field because we, we need, of course, a vibrant and thriving uh, community of scholars in all those countries to be uh, fully involved in the international circuits of research and, uh, and, and study. Uh, so together with a number of colleagues, we worked at this uh, in different uh, um, attempts. And in this book, I try to uh, make an argument about why contextual influences made uh, the trajectories of reform of the public sector in these uh, countries, both different, differentiated among themselves, of course, as well as distinctive from the trajectories in other countries. For example, how did it happen that the public sector in the United Kingdom is so managerialized and this did not penetrate or not to the same level, definitely not the same uh, level in those other countries. It's not that they weren't exposed to international pressures to managerialize. It is that the context there was less uh, 
uh, friendly or more inimical, if you like, to a managerialist approach. And so the way in which reforms are played out in those countries were different. Why? Because uh, the model of administration is different, because uh, of the dynamics of the political party system there, because of the presence of uh, uh, special core and, and the grand corps de l'état, that is uh, the way in which the civil service is organized in those countries, because of the role of the unions, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in those countries, and so on and so forth. So a range of factors contribute to making, uh, uh, to an explanation of the dynamics of the reform of public management in those countries. Context matters. This was a kind of meso level, so looking at the country level or a cluster of, of countries. Uh, in a more recent uh, uh, work, uh, together with colleague uh, Professor Jorn Fairley from King's College London, we tried to, to uh, think about context seriously at the more micro level, which is typical in business schools. So we, uh, our object of analysis very often is one organization, how it behaves. And uh, what we make in this, in this book is the argument that context matters. And perhaps this is a bit unusual in, in strategic management texts uh, for, for the public uh, sector. What we argue is that contextual influences shape the strategic management of a public organization by shaping the kind of autonomy and the kind of accountability that public organizations enjoy. Let's go back to our head teacher of the school. Uh, the condition of autonomy to manage strategically are very different from one context to the other. We have seen that the ways in which Staff is recruited, for example, is very different. The decisions that are within the remit of the public strategist may be very different. But also what is expected of a public manager may be profoundly different. So what is expected of the head teacher of a school as a strategist of that school may depend on underlying premises that are shaped by the context in that country. To put it very uh, plainly, there is a very limited expectation that the head teacher of a school in Italy is held accountable about the performance of students there because basically he or she cannot control much of the levers, cannot choose the staff, the teaching staff, uh, cannot change or only very limitedly can change uh, um, the curricula and the way in which uh, uh, the teaching activities organized, and so on and so forth. So context may shape the very premises of what managing strategically a public organization, an organization for public services, may ultimately mean in terms of the autonomy to make strategic decisions and in terms of what is expected of the uh, public strategist, and so the kind of accountability which, uh, in a sense, shapes uh, what it means managing strategically a public services organization. Uh, so again, context, uh, we argue, matters in a very fundamental sense. More recently, I tried a more of a macro approach, and of course, uh, this, uh, this is a different kind, an altogether different kind of product, of course. But uh, to my knowledge, in our field, it's the first handbook, which is not handbook of public management, handbook of public administration, full stop. It's handbook of public management, public administration, in Europe, context related. Actually, it is both written by the uh, scholarly uh, community in the field of public management and public administration, and takes into account uh, the factual context of how the public sector uh, works uh, in, uh, in Europe. So the idea is, uh, is uh, to provide an understanding of public administration that takes into account the factual as well as the conceptual context of knowledge. This is a product of the European scholarly community in the field, well, of course, those who uh, very kindly accepted to join this venture and devote their time to contributing one or more chapters to this, as well as uh, the context of public administration in Europe. Because very rarely in our field, at least in public administration and public management, we have universal laws, law-like generalizations that cover the whole world. We, we, we must make attempts to gain that kind of knowledge, of course, but much of our knowledge is contextualized. And so the idea is that even a handbook, uh, to be perhaps even more useful, has to take context into account and so has to be contextualized. So it's about public administration, public management in uh, Europe. 
and then more recently, actually, uh, this is a kind of uh, joining too big, uh, the too big uh, intellectual passions of, of my life, so the field uh, uh, in which I do research and, uh, and philosophy. Uh, this uh, book makes an attempt to somehow uh, reflect on the philosophical foundations of the field of public administration as uh, such. But the way in which I wanted to read it uh, on this occasion, maybe a little bit of a stretch, but is a way again of thinking of the broader and broader and broader, so if you like, in a sense, broadest um, context, in the sense that the way in which we think, so the philosophical foundations of of, uh, uh, of Western and European civilization is, in, in, in a very deep sense, part of the um, context of knowledge, uh, also when applied to a specific field like studying public administration in Europe, so studying European PA. So, uh, in some sense, uh, a, a, a way of reading these works, and of course, uh, first of all and foremost, the works of all the colleagues uh, who are struggling with the issue of context is to make sense in different ways and possibly at different levels, to pitch it at different levels of how context may make, uh, may help uh, and contribute to our understanding uh, of uh, uh, public organizations and the public sector as a whole and the work of public managers in the broadest sense, those who care and look after public services. I cannot end this, this uh, um, <clears throat> uh, moment of reflection together with you all without mentioning that uh, the more I reflect about this topic and the more, of course, uh, although in a very limited and, uh, and a little bit of a, a sparse and occasional uh, way, but the more I also uh, make my foray into um, other social sciences because uh, you know public administration and public management is about uh, everything you uh, you get involved into uh, the different policies uh, across uh, the broad uh, gamut the broad spectrum of of public uh, uh, of public policies depending on the research project you do or the kind of focus in your empirical investigation that you have and uh, the more I delve into that, the more I think that really context uh, may matter more broadly across the social sciences. Uh, and so bringing contextual analysis into the picture is something which is an effort which may be uh, really worth doing it. Uh, and I'm reflecting and also trying to, to, to bridge uh, across our colleagues uh, in, the, in, the, in the natural sciences, uh, I think that even in the context, or I dare to make the argument here, that even in the, uh, by definition, a contextualized natural sciences, well, is it really so? If uh, they are to join the social sciences for a more uh, comprehensive understanding of a certain phenomenon, so we know from medicine uh, we can never uh, just look uh, look at, at, the, at the therapy and the pathology and the therapy without looking at the person in its entirety, the more we do this and the more we need to, to, in order to understand the person, we need to understand the context in which each and every person lives uh, uh, her or his social uh, life. So understanding context is a research endeavor which may permeate uh, so many areas and uh, may be worth expanding across uh, policy fields. And indeed, I think uh, this uh, sensitivity to understanding context and contextual uh, influences may also be a plus and give uh, really the edge uh, in uh, uh, and for effective teaching. Making learners aware and capable of reading through the varied circumstances uh, of their professional life and relating knowledge about the contents to understanding of context is key to professional and, if I may, human uh, development more broadly. So it, I think that generating this knowledge is really um, goes hand in hand with uh, uh, being at the edge of, uh, uh, of the teaching uh, offer. Knowledge about context is key to a distinctive and actually uh, cutting edge uh, teaching offer and enabling a proper learning experience. So uh, I would like to emphasize this side too. Uh, as, as, uh, as worthy, really, of pursuing. And finally, just before I conclude, uh, let me uh, dedicate this inaugural lecture to uh, an esteemed colleague and a very good friend, Professor Christopher Pollitt, 
who has been professor at the Open University over a long time and has uh, so hugely contributed to our understanding of context and contextual influences in public policy and public management. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.